Hi guys, I hope you're having a wonderful evening. Well, today's sermon will serve two purposes. First purpose is to wish everybody a very Merry Christmas and um, all the best for the holiday season and the new year. And the other purpose is to um, preach my sermon called Break a Little. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for this brief time together, Lord. I pray that you'll speak to me, speak through me. Let your Holy Spirit endow me with power. In the name of Jesus, amen. Um, this whole sermon came about, it's called Break a Little. It came about when I was reading... First of all, let me say, I was reading um, audiobooks online through the Toronto Public Library. They have a lot of audiobooks. And I just happened upon uh, this, these audiobooks by, um, by someone um, I really admire. She, she be she writes kind of lifestyle stuff and um, kind of really motivational stuff. She, she herself is a Christian, but she doesn't write Christian stuff. She writes kind of lifestyle, inspirational stuff. Um, I read her first two books, and she talked a lot about her husband. And her family and and how wonderful her marriage was and her her life was and she gave advice about how to um, achieve goals and how um, purpose and it was very inspiring I got to the third book though and the first thing which was published this year um, and the th first thing I read was I'm in the midst of a divorce um, she said about her marriage and her husband and my heart just um, my heart just um, conv not convulsed but my heart was so pained because knowing how in love she was with her husband and how seeming uh, to have the quote unquote perfect marriage and she although I know from talking to married people that marriage is never perfect um, but but talking but but talking, but uh, re reading about that person, my heart just constricted. And she talked about how mean people were online, saying, I want my money back from your conferences because you're getting divorced. So anyway, I was thinking about this person, and I was thinking about how I wanted to wrap my arms around her and in the book she didn't talk too much about what happened or whatever in her marriage but in the book she talked about her children and how she had to um, be strong for her children and as I thought I I sat back and I thought about things as I usually do while I was praying for her and that whole situation and um, the Lord said to me and said, um, some people think they have to be strong all the way through it all. They have to be strong for their friends. They have to be strong. Um, they have to be strong all the time for their children, for their um, 
for everyone around them and what they don't realize is that they don't realize two things they don't realize that a i don't expect them to be strong because my strength is made perfect in their weakness and b being strong is not what i want for them brokenness is what i want for them and when i say brokenness i don't mean devastation i don't mean crying every day i don't mean all that i don't mean devastation when i say brokenness it's it's a kind of releasing of what you think will be it's a kind of releasing of the pain it's a kind of releasing of the fear it's a kind of saying, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm broken. And also, you, you don't want to do that too much around little kids. But they, especially when you're going through something devastating, you don't want to lay it on, on little kids because they can't handle it. Not even just little kids but just on your kids in general. But you, he said something really interesting to me. He said, you want to break a little in front of your kids because so that they know and understand that it's okay to feel sad. It's okay to miss dad. It's okay to be upset about whatever and this goes past divorce this goes past a relationship thing this is go goes for anything don't be afraid to break in front of those around you many of you for the past few months since the pandemic started have been holding stuff in Everything's fine, everything's fine, and everything is not fine. Um, and the Lord's saying, I'm longing for brokenness, even in front of me. I'm longing for you to just be, to just be broken and say, Lord, this hurts. Lord, this sucks. And some of you are even going to the other description the other extreme where you're talking about it too much and you're lying on the floor and falling down in tears and but it's not really brokenness it's a at that point it could be a cry for attention god wants true and caught true and utter um brokenness from you so that he can put you together because before before you break um he can't put you together in the right way when i say break i mean just release all the pain and release all the struggle i don't mean break as in fall apart and never get back together again but brokenness is the first step to healing and a lot of a lot of you won't heal because you're afraid to be broken you think you have to be strong and tough you don't let him carry you even if you have young children and you're dealing with something hard um, like and you don't know what to do don't show them all of it because they can't handle it but show them a bit of it just so that they know it's okay to break and the lord is telling telling you that it's okay to break it's okay to lean on others sometimes it's okay to lean, lean on him but before you lean on others, you've got to break in front of your father. He loves you. 
and he knows you're hurting, but you're trying to carry so much on your own, and you don't have to carry it all alone. You don't have to carry it alone. And you've just got to understand that he loves you more than you could ever know. And he wants to share your burdens with you. He said, cast your cares upon me because I care for you. He wants me to say today, this holiday season, he cares for you. And he's just waiting for you to release the burden. You don't have to hold hold on to your burden so hard. You don't have to carry things by yourself. First of all, what you need to do is just lay down at his feet and say, God, I can't do this, Lord, I'm scared. And that doesn't mean you lack faith. That means you're human. And it's okay. Admit where you are so he can get you to where he wants you to be. If you're afraid, admit that you're afraid. If you're apprehensive, admit that you're apprehensive so so he can work with it. He, he can't work with what you won't acknowledge. You've been locked up so tight and he wants you to release that burden, release that fear, and be honest about it. Be real about it to him and then first he will let you know who it's okay to re- to release that thing to because sometimes some people are not not everybody's made for everything and sometimes you're telling people things that they can't handle because they're they're not designed to carry that stuff and others that are designed to carry you're not telling them so the best thing to do is go to god first and then he will direct you of who to tell and who can handle that and he's saying i'm not longing for strength this season you don't have to be strong you just have to be broken enough and know that i will carry you in the brokenness and i will put you together and your strength will be made my strength sorry My strength will be made perfect in your weakness. A lot of you are just focused on being strong. I have to be strong for my family, strong for my kids. When are you going to be weak for yourself? Weak in a way that that you can let God carry you and you can let others take the burden off of you. No man is an island. You can't do it on your own. You weren't designed to carry it on your own. You weren't designed to run here, run there, take the kids there, do this for your husband, do this for your wife, do this for your church, preach on Sunday, and then lead the worship team. You need help. You need to ask for help. And there is no shame. And, and admitting an area of weakness is actually strength and bravery. And know that he will catch you in your weakness and carry you. He won't just catch you. He'll carry you to safety. And he wants me to tell you you're safe with him. You may not feel safe with anybody else, but you're safe with God. Brokenness, brokenness is what I long for. Brokenness is what you need, what I need. Brokenness, brokenness is what you want from me. Take my heart and mold it. Take my mind 
transform it. Take my will, conform it to yours, to yours, oh Lord. You don't have to carry it alone. You've been carrying your burdens alone for months, acting like things are fine, but they're not. You're struggling. You may not be struggling physically, but you're struggling emotionally. And I know it's hard to admit, but admitting is the first sign, is the first step to healing. And it's okay to struggle sometimes. We all do. I do every day. But I know that I have a God that loves me. And I I have a family that loves me and friends that if I need them, they'll come run it. I know that. And so sometimes you don't know who's there for you unless you ask. Don't carry stuff alone. And don't wait till it's totally unbearable. And and you can't help handle it anymore, ask for help. And know that God will carry you through. Know that he's wiser than you. Know that he loves you more than, more than you know. Know that he loves your children, loves your husband, loves your wife, loves your family more than you do. Loves your son, loves your daughter. And he just wants to share the burden. And he wants to give you wisdom about that burden. But you won't talk to anyone about it. Not even him. He wants you to talk to him because he wants to share it with you. Because he cherishes you and and he loves you. And there's nothing he doesn't want to give you. He doesn't. He wants to come to your rescue, but you you are even shutting him out. The Lord just said something to me. You are shutting out who you need to pull to to pull close. There are people that you need to pull close and you're shutting them out. Open up your heart. He'll protect you. He'll protect it. Do not be afraid to be broken. Good night, guys. I'll see you later. Brokenness. Brokenness is what I want. Brokenness is what I need. Brokenness. Brokenness is what you want from me. We trust you, Lord, today, and we will not be afraid to be broken in front of you so that you can build us up again. Because without a of breaking that cannot be a building. And for you to build us up, for you to strengthen us, you need to break us first. And Lord, help us not be, to be afraid to break. In the name of Jesus, amen. And help us to know that we won't fall apart. That you'll be right there to put us back together. The Father wants to put you back together again. Oh, the Father wants to put, to put you back together again. Let go. Let go so he can carry you. Let go 
so your family and friends can be there for you. Let go. Let go and let love in. Stop pushing people away. Let go and let love in. Let go and let love in. Let go and let love in. Don't be afraid to love on any level. Don't be afraid to let go and let love in. And the first love you need to let in is God's love. Don't push it away, let it in. In your own words, ask him to come into your life and into your heart and do the work and you, you won't regret it. Thanks guys. Talk soon. Bye. Merry Christmas. I wish you a Merry Christmas. I wish you a Merry Christmas. I wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Have a safe and prosperous holiday season with your family. Merry Christmas. Brokenness, brokenness probably understood is not a sign of weakness. It's a sign of strength. It's a, it's a sign that you you want God to rebuild you again. God can't reveal what is already put together. For God to reveal, rebuild you, you have to not be afraid to break and know that he will put you back together. And know that all he wants is to see you healthy, happy, full of faith and whole. I'll be praying for you this holiday season. Bye. I'll be praying that joy fill your heart, your home, and your life, and his peace. Peace that passes up all understanding will guard your heart and mind. In the name of Jesus, that's my prayer for you this holiday season. Amen. See you guys later.